Fat phobia is bad for all women, not just fat women. And I think that's the thing that people don't get. Like, yes, obviously it's bad for fat women, but it's also bad for thin women. Even if you're currently winning the whatever beauty standard that we have, by subscribing to that, you are setting yourself up for failure because now you have put the threat in place that if you if your body changes, your value will be lost. And you're doing the same thing though, like in the reverse direction. If you're sitting here and you're proclaiming body positivity and you're proclaiming fat acceptance, you do realize that if you've ever in your life decide to lose weight, which I guess is in 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 practice is never gonna happen for these people. It's impractical to even say these people are gonna lose weight. You do realize that you would literally literally be stabbing in the back all of the people that followed you because that you because you made that change, right? Like that it's it's the same shit is just reversed. So yes it's true like if you're skinny and you proclaim that you're beautiful and being skinny is awesome and amazing and all this other stuff and you gain weight it might like look a little bit worse but then again at least that's a little bit more justified given the fact that as you get older your body starts to break down more and more and more so you have more of an excuse to gain weight over time rather than just being fat default in your 20s and maintaining that and then suddenly realizing that, hey, maybe it's not a good idea to be like 400 pounds. Like maybe it's not a good idea to be, you know, 350. And maybe I actually have a lot more value in other places. And maybe I should actually lose some weight. Like in both ways, you're, you know, you, you, you smack it up the people that I guess follow you. But even still, um, it would be preferable to at least try to lose the weight and stay like that. I don't know. Like it's probably better for the first one. By putting your value and your worth in your body shape and size there's i see these people say this right they say there's you're putting worth in your body size and shape there is worth in your body size and shape anybody anybody will tell you that like if you need a job or if you need a particular uh, uh you need a job or you need like a place to go or whatever being pretty is going to get you in the door. A lot of people will just let you go places. I've seen it. You've seen it. Don't act like you haven't where somebody is able to cut in line or somebody's able to get special privileges because of the way that they look. And that is what it is. Like maybe you're able to get into the club before everybody else because you're prettier. Mainly only it really applies to women, but that's what we're talking about here. So yes, there are times and scenarios where somebody might be treated more so uh, in, a, in a better direction or like in a... A favorable direction because of the way that their body is shaped it is what it is so i understand what you're saying but it's not just like i'm putting value in my body it's literally just inherent to how we think as human beings that there is going to be value based on somebody's looks you were setting yourself up for failure and even if you never fail that it's it's such it's such a bullshit way of thinking about it because it's basically like saying well if you put value in your body if you work on yourself if you make yourself more if you make yourself more adept to the surroundings, right, making your body physically uh, better and, and physically more attractive, ultimately you'll just get ugly, which could possibly take 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Uh, you're setting yourself up for failure because when you turn 60 or 70, guess what? You're going to be ugly. I guess, dude, sure, but at least I get that 10, 20, 30, 40 years of my life where I'm healthier and I can possibly even be in my 60s, 70s, 80s with little to no health complications, whereas you are literally just setting yourself up for health complications right now. So I get it, but it's it doesn't make sense. It, it just it just doesn't. Threat will be hanging over you forever. Is that really a world you want to live in? Yes, yes. I would prefer if people were healthy. I I don't know why this is like a very crazy idea that people can be unhealthy in fat bodies, but it is a true statement. If you're fat. You're unhealthy is not good. Is that a world you want for your friends and your family? Is yes, I want my friends and my family to be thinner. I want them to actually focus on their physical shape and body because guess what? You only have one of those. It would be really, really weird that we wouldn't incentivize people to be uh, physically maintaining the size and shape of their body throughout their entire life. Literally only have one of those. So yes, I want you, yes, I want you to maintain that throughout the entire life. It's like your teeth. Take care of your teeth because guess what? You only have one pair of those. And yes, you can get like dentures or like people chiseled them down and like they get like uh the steve harvey fucking what are they called the veneers like you can get those but ultimately what i'm saying is like you only have one set of everything and there might be some like medical intervention that you can get but why would you want to bank on that given that that most of the time is just gambles already so yes 
I get what you're saying. Like starting from a baseline of fat, it can only get better. But starting from a baseline of healthy, it can only get worse. I get what you're saying. But at least if I'm in a baseline of health already, at least I got that going for me. Whereas you are just literally on the side of being fat and that's only ever bad. Is that a world you want for your daughters and your nieces? Like, because men use it as a threat to make women feel bad about themselves. They're like, oh, what if you gain weight? How many times have you heard men use that? Not many times at all, dude. What? Really? Do men use that as an insult or like a way to get under your skin? Oh, you're just going to gain weight? You're, you're. What if you gain weight? I've, I've never heard that. I've never used that in an argument before. Uh, nope, never, never seen that. But I could be wrong. Maybe somebody in the comment section could enlighten me or everybody else if this is actually something that is said. But regardless of whether or not it is said or not, so what, dude? Like, you do realize that there is such thing as attraction and that men or in general people are not going to be attracted to other people that are overweight so there's automatically that there right there and i understand that maybe you don't think that but it's true like most people are not attracted to fat people and i know it sucks to say because you're a fat person so yeah but no most people are not attracted to fat people it is so common because it's such a powerful tool it is a tool of the patriarchy and it's always the patriarchy dude why the patriarchy so your husband tells you that you're gaining weight suddenly the patriarchy what the fuck are you talking about dude that doesn't make any sense i'm sick of these people just blaming these problems on like overarching giant grandiose fucking societal structures that may or may not actually exist because like if you don't know patriarchy is basically like men in general like the men at the top of the hierarchy uh, that are, I guess, putting, like, for the most part, the world was made for men. And the reason for that is because for all of time, men did everything. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that women did, can, didn't contribute to society. They did. But we're seeing recently, as time goes on, that women are contributing more and more and more in places that we never thought that were even possible for women. And they're actually replacing way more men, and men are actually failing. And the reason for that is because for the longest time, men all they had to do was have a job that's it so that's pretty much like default now for everybody including women but we're also seeing that women are better in communications we're seeing that women are better at school we're seeing women are better in job placements most of the time depending on the job right and physical jobs are becoming less and less demanding don't get me wrong these physical jobs still are there but we have other jobs now and jobs that are maybe a little bit more demanding for your brain who knows like mental capacity jobs so I'm not saying men don't have the articulation to be adequate in these positions, but it turns out that women are pretty good in these positions and they're like dominating schools and they're dominating these work environments. So in an era where physical work is not as incentivized as it once used to be, and in an era where non-physical work is incentivized, we see that women are picking up the slack in ways that men can't or don't. So we're seeing women doing more and it's awesome it's great it's fantastic right men need to step it up a little bit whether that be through systemic change or whether that be through men just acknowledging whether or not they have to do certain things or uh, build themselves up in better ways i don't know there's a plenty of things that men can do um to make themselves more equipped for society as it is right now because like a lot of guys will sit there and tell you that oh women ain't shit women don't got any value women are just bitches or whatever like they want so much from me like dude what do you think this woman wants from you dude like he, she just wants you to make an income she wants you to know how to like do dishes she wants you to know how to like you know not be a sulking bag of rocks where you just don't say anything at all like it, it, you know emotional communication that stuff is really important for most women and the thing is she's already got that like she's already making an income she probably already has her own apartment she probably knows how to cook and clean since women are like literally readily equipped with that stuff the moment they're born right like that stuff's all taught to them i don't know why so many parents like don't teach their sons that they need to do the dishes and wash their clothes that's like really incentive and that alone like knowing how to cook clean um take care of yourself is going to put you far and away better than like most other guys i know it sounds i know it sounds really crazy to say that but like even those things alone will make you a better candidate compared to like 99 percent of other men so there are plenty of things that men can do uh, to enhance themselves to make them better suited for other women around them and that's just one of them so i mean sure like she can sit there and say it's patriarchy but for the most part women are succeeding in like a lot of ways and if you're sitting here proclaiming patriarchy uh that shit don't hold up bro it just really don't like maybe to some degree you know like you might have like the i think they say like 
you know, chairs and cars or whatever, like the seats and cars and the way that we buckle into seatbelts are fundamentally designed for men or whatever. Like, okay, you might have that. But like, come on, dude. We're really stretching really, really far on this shit. And I feel like this is the stretchiest that she's ever gone. Because like, let's be honest here. That. It is so common because it's such a powerful tool. It is a tool of the patriarchy and the fact that people don't get that. They're just like, yes, thin is in, skinny queen. You're like, Dude, you know how crazy it is to say that the reason why people want to be skinny is because of the patriarchy? Do you know how dis- do you know how fucking disrespectful that is to say that? Do you think that everything revolves around men? Like, do you honestly believe that? Look, there is, to a certain degree... A gender dynamics right whereas women are trying to impress men and men are trying to impress women anytime i've ever been to the gym 99 percent of the time guys will tell me that the reason they got into the gym to begin with was because they wanted to be more attractive to women which is a good reason um you know it's fine it's not always the best reason because it should be for you first and foremost but usually as men go to the gym more and more and more they slowly start to realize that they have more to offer than just what a woman wants so they go to the gym to better themselves which is really attractive for most women right so it would you consider that to be also a part of the patriarchy like men trying to get women is that how it is too or it or just like women going to the gym like i guess doing like squats is like for men like you know do you see how crazy that is so i guess the ultimate objective is if you want to piss off men or like just never get a boyfriend or like <laughs> just per- perpetually be fat and unhealthy is stay fat i guess because everything that you do in terms of like getting skinny is going to be contributing to the patriarchy all right damn dude fuck dude you really just like blew me away with that one dude you really have you really thought about this i can tell the patriarchy and the fact that people don't get that they're just like yes thin is in skinny queen you're like man if only there was research that studied this fat people avoid going to the doctor because they don't want to face the truth i see that most of the time when these people talk about not going to the doctor they do they do get like some kind of dramatic event oh the doctor tells them that they need to lose weight and they feel as though that that issue is really not the issue that's entailed for that so like i see a lot of times where they go oh my doctor said my ankle pain is due to the fact that i weigh 200 pounds over what i should weigh and it's obviously not because of that and i went to three other doctors and they all said the same thing so it has to be obviously fat phobia medical fat phobias i'm never going to go to the doctor again so i see that a lot um which is probably the same thing i guess which is like basically avoiding the doctor because you don't want to face the truth i do see that actually quite a bit exact topic Oh wait, there totally is. Impact of weight bias and stigma on quality care and outcomes for patients with obesity. Because research on weight bias in medical settings is incredibly well documented, as well as the effects that being stigmatized has on health. This is the basic pathway that these researchers point out tends to happen. So you have a fat patient, and then you have provider attitudes who enact stigma. So these are doctors who stigmatize their patients. You have these threatening environmental cues where somebody's weight is centered and they're not treated very seriously. Usually their weight is centered because most of the time, like, I understand that these people have a motive and they have to echo the same stuff over and over and over again. So they'll basically say the same shit like weight is not a problem or it's like less of an issue than most people think it is. When in reality, the the, 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 the truth of it is it, it's a big issue. It's a really big issue. It's an epidemic. It's a problem that should be addressed for most people. But I understand that they have an objective here. So they're not going to say the truth. So, yes. Uh, I do agree that there is probably biases in medical fields and probably some really shit doctors. Like, I've been to the doctors before, and I remember literally getting blood work done. And my doctor literally was like, yeah, your your blood work is great. And I was like, oh, okay, uh, can you tell me what is, like, going on with my blood work? He's like, ah, it's good. It, it's, like, it's really good. Yeah, uh, What do you want to know exactly? I was like, I don't know. I was just like, I really don't know how to, like, I don't know what any of this means. Can you help me? Can you, like, Rosetta Stone this? And he was like, um, why? You know, like, what do you, why do you want to... Why do you want to do this? And I was like, what are you talking about, bro? I was like, my blood work. What do you mean? Like, I obviously want to know what everything means, obviously. But I guess because a lot of times two people just kind of get that, oh, yeah, you're good. And then they just head out, which is fine, I guess. But for me, no, I want to know exactly what this means and how it entails, which is fine for a lot of doctors because I'm sure that they don't have to deal with that stuff on a day-to-day basis. Therefore, it's not incentivized for them to learn. But for somebody like me, which I'm always trying to make sure that my blood work or anything I get tested for is snappy good and you know adequate 
um, this person was not equipped for that. They had no idea. And they literally told me that they were like, Oh, I don't know. It's been so long since I've learned about this stuff. It's like, nobody really asked this questions. I'll bring somebody in that does know how to get, you know, how to, how to dismantle this or how to like, uh, you know, translate this for you, which is, um, fine, I guess, but not all doctors are created equal. Not everybody has the same experience as everybody else. And that sucks. But also what do you, what do you, what can you do? It's like, when people come at me and they say like systemic systemic racism this systemic racism that like i understand what these people are saying right but most of the time when people face the most racism it's usually because of personal experience like you you meet somebody they say something very very racist to you it's very um most of the time that's the case like most people have like very very racist experiences from somebody or very very sexist experiences not from like the workplace not from your boss or whatever but from people on the street or like maybe you know a guy working next to you not like systemic stuff you know and i feel like it's like that like you know you can't really help the fact that a doctor is going to be fat phobic which most of the time when you're going to medical school they teach you to be fat phobic because it's not a good thing to be fat so therefore they're going to be fat phobic out the gate just based off of that as a result of that all of these bad things happen like patients experiencing stress you know what's really bad for your health being stressed all the time yeah but you got to understand that if you're stressed out because the doctor told you that your weight is a problem what is that doctor supposed to do like it's obvious that you're going to be stressed out regardless and maybe that doctor can get better training in telling you about that stuff maybe to make you feel more secure or less stressed out but most of that stuff like being stressed is on you like you can't if you can't handle it get out the kitchen and if your weight wasn't an issue it wouldn't be an issue could we just say that for a sec Same. And then you have this link on the bottom where it's like, oh, when providers have stereotypes about patients, it affects that with the decisions they make about the patient's care. Makes sense. And yeah. take with a grain of salt, I would argue that this middle link is a cause of the top and bottom links rather than its own relation. Sure. I mean, there's there's probably some truth to it all, but I feel like these people like drastically blow out the reason why doctors say what they say. Like most of the time when you're going to medical school, you're going to be taught this stuff because guess what? there's truth to it. Being fat is not a good thing. There's little to no value in it. And the fact that we live in a society that literally incentivizes it, that literally tells you it's okay to be fat is crazy. And these people can like fully live in a full life while being fat. I mean, obviously it depends on what you mean by full, but you get what I'm saying. Hello, let me do some more education today. You can't even say you're fat because you're not. You're literally just bigger. Nah, Marissa is fat. Marissa is very fat, matter of fact. She is big. Marissa is massive, dude. No joke, okay? So if you're sitting here saying, like, ambiguously, you want to be a little bit kind to Marissa by saying that she's bigger, you can do that, but I'm going to let you know right now, it's going to be lost on her because Marissa takes everything all the time she'll take it every like purposefully she'll take it wrong because that's just like the, the type of person that marissa is she's super pessimistic she's going to take it wrong regardless of whatever it is you could say the most nice kind beautiful thing to marissa and she'll come at you with i know i'm that you don't have to tell me you saying that is like a form of the patriarchy and fat phobia i can't believe that you would ever say that you're disgusting gross and horrible you're all these things simultaneously that is marissa and i'm not even joking either Okay, apparently so just a reminder that fat means fat and if you are not fat or you are not the individual person who describes themselves as fat then you cannot tell them what they can and cannot identify as see like even even though i see the the the, the comment as like they're trying to be nice to her by giving her the benefit of the doubt by saying like oh you're not fat marissa's not going to see it that way she's going to immediately call you out and she's going to say mean disgusting terrible things to you so like i said I, it's probably just best not to even interact with this person given the fact that they take everything so incredibly wrong regardless and by the way it doesn't even make sense to say like oh yeah you can't say that they're wrong about what they identify as, dude. If you sit there and you say, I identify as a cat or a chicken, I'm going to look at you and I'm going to go, that's nah, nah. That's obviously not true, bro. Not true at all. But when it comes to this, yes, Marissa is very fat. You should be calling her fat. Or bi. Two, fat means or fat. Or bi, I'm sorry, dude. Can and cannot identify as. Or bi. Two, fat means fat. It doesn't mean ugly. It doesn't mean anything else. It means fat. And I am fat. I think a lot of people would agree with me on this, but I think that when you are fat, you do induce a little bit of ugliness upon yourself because you're blowing out whatever beauty that you did have originally off your body. So yes, like I see what you're saying. I do. 
um but let's be honest here for a second if you were like a 10 let's say for instance you were like a 10 physically speaking a 10 out of 10 a dime as a lot of people say and you gained weight that you think that dime is staying at 10 no it's not it's it's deducting it's the 100 losing value as you move on with your life so it's okay to understand that as you get older, you will become uglier and uglier, which is fine, by the way. And I personally think that sometimes, depending on the person, they actually get better looking. So I don't even know if that's necessarily true. But when it comes to being fat, I definitely think there is a truth to that, depending on how fat that you get. Like if you're 10, 15 pounds over, you might actually be a little bit better looking when you're fat. Like I know a lot of Samoan dudes that are just better looking while fat, and that's okay. But for most people, you get uglier while you get fat. That's a factual statement. You just lose a lot of your beauty value when you gain weight. So, I I mean, I'm going to have to disagree with Marissa here. Fat. I genuinely believe Marissa would be way more attractive if Marissa chose to lose weight. But that's my opinion. It doesn't mean ugly. It doesn't mean anything else. It means fat. And I am fat. True. You can't say I'm not fat. True. No, Marissa, you're fat. You're fat, dude. Wow, you're fat. Fat, big, and plus size all mean the same fucking thing. Fat, big, and plus size all the... Yeah, sure, they're all synonymous to a certain degree or another, but it's like saying, like, truck, car, SUV. Like, sure, they all are roughly the same thing, but, like, let's be honest here for a second. Those terms mean fundamentally different things. So if you say fat, plus size... If somebody says plus size, I think of something completely different than I think of somebody that's fat. You understand, like... The terminologies that we use should be very specific when we're talking about shit like this. Like, you're fine in calling yourself fat, but if you said you were plus size, I'm going to be questioning that shit. Like, what do you mean by plus size, bro? You're obviously not plus size. Plus size to me would be like 10, 15 pounds over, maybe 20, 30 pounds over, not 100 or 200 pounds over. I don't know why we have this issue of, like, misdiagnosing certain people's body types, dude, but I'm sick of it. Like, I'm sick of having these ideas just be just thrown out the fucking window because we want to like cater to people's feelings i don't care how you feel you blink i you're not plus sized you're fat big and plus size are just nicer ways of saying it for people who still think that fat has a bad connotation to it it does have a bad connotation for the most people for the most people so yes i can say that i'm fucking fat true because i am i'm fucking fat damn i know this person didn't like mean that much by it yeah they didn't but this is the problem with marissa is like she'll get one comment and she'll immediately go off on that person regardless of what they said you could literally say the nicest thing to that person like hey marissa i think that you're an amazing person and then she'll literally go at you and say some shit like oh no i know an amazing person you don't have to tell me that you're projecting like you're a fucking terrible disgusting horrid you know you smell like oranges that are inverted upside down and that you know bird poop like that's what you would say like it, it's just like that anytime she talks it's always bad because i am like what's even the point you know like marissa literally is such a i'm not gonna say she's a terrible human being but it's so bad to listen to her sometimes like i just can't help but to like shut off my brain sometimes because most of the stuff she says makes absolutely no sense and she's always so bad when she says it too she's super condescending she's super fucking provocative when she says any of it like she's trying to start fights for no reason and she always looks dumb while doing it because n every time she starts a fight it almost she always loses every single time and when she loses she just proclaims she wins which is crazy uh that's literally her though i'm fucking fat i know this person didn't like mean that much by it like i don't think they were ill-intended with that but this is just for everyone who thinks that you're not allowed to call me fat i'm literally fat and you can't tell fat people to not call themselves fat. Like, that's ridiculous. True. Marissa's got that, though. She's 100% sure she got that. But anyway, guys, we're going to end the video here. If you enjoyed today's video, I appreciate for everybody to leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I'd appreciate tremendously. If you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in FAT because apparently calling somebody fat is not a problem, but it is a problem depending on who you talk to. There are plenty of people within that community that will literally come at your neck if you call them fat. So can't ever be right or wrong in these scenarios, literally. Like you might as well just use whatever language you wanna use at this point because you're gonna be demonized for it regardless. So you know what, but you're beautiful. You're a specimen, you're a fucking amazing organism. I think actually you have Wi-Fi coming off of you on a daily basis because of how energetic you are and by the way that wi-fi argument it's because we have a connection we have a major connection i'm always picking up signals from you and good signals at that you beautiful spectacular amazing just lubricated person you smell look and are good you're so amazing enjoy the rest of your day if you want to check out my social media it'll be linked down below in the description 
It's just my Instagram, Twitter, Discord. If you want to check out any of that stuff, feel free to do so. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. 